Hello friends, this is Pebo Mike Bailey here. Uh, I just wanted to make a little bit of a different kind of video today than you're used to seeing on my channel, which usually has vlogs and pro wrestling content. But uh, Christmas season is coming up, so there's something I really wanted to raise awareness to because it's really important to me. If you know anything about me, I love monkeys, love a good monkey video. You know that uh, we have a monkey videos section on the Discord where people post their, their videos of monkeys, which are all fantastic. But Christmas is coming up. And uh, one of the most important things that was ever said to me in my entire life, and I don't even remember who said it, but I still remember it to this day. Owning a pet monkey is like having a baby that will never grow up and can kill you. Right. So you might think it's a fun little Christmas gift. Oh, what does uh, little Johnny need this year? Oh, I know. I'll get him a baboon. That would be, in fact, a terrible idea. Um, and, and so this is kind of an example. Right. I've got this video here. Uh, this is a uh, this is Kiki, the spider monkey. Right. Look, swings off a rope, does a little jumps at the fridge 360 on the counter jumps on its skateboard jumps back over the sink it's awesome it's amazing I, I could watch this video all day I could scroll through Kiki the spider monkey videos for hours it's great this is what this is what people think having a pet monkey is gonna be like but the, the reality is a lot darker and um, so I, I found this story online that I thought I would uh, we should read together because to me that story is a lot more representative of what it's really like to own a pet monkey. So it's uh it's on, on Cora.com, right? Someone asks, are there any pros and cons to having a pet monkey? And uh, if you just scroll through all the answers, except for the, this one, I'm going to read the the answers are, are resounding. There are very few pros and a lot of cons. But this one is from. Uh, Brandon Holt uh, had two pet monkeys while living in Kenya as a teenager, right? So he man knows monkeys. Why do monkeys make terrible pets? When I was a teenager, my parents were missionaries in Kenya. We lived in the middle of nowhere. A day's rough drive to the nearest gas station, there were a lot of monkeys and baboons in the area, which again might seem fun, but sometimes the locals would shoot the monkeys that were taking the vegetables and they were trying to grow in their garden. When monkeys are young, they cling to their mothers and sleep while the mother does whatever it does. If someone shot the mother, then this left the baby which they regarded as kind of useless and would generally just leave it or kill it. However, these strange white people, them, Brandon and his family, had recently showed up so they decided to try to sell it to us, the monkey. My mother was also raised in Africa, Congo and knew better, so she told us no. As I am doing right now. I'm, I'm much like Brandon's mother telling you all no to having a pet monkey. The kids started throwing the monkey in the air and would laugh when it scrambled around looking for its mother. Dad about lost his mind at this. He chased off kids and we had a pet monkey. It was a vervet monkey like this. And then you see this picture. It's like, oh, so cute. Look at this little harmless monkey, right? We expected it to die. Its eyes were not even open yet, but we fed it nuts and seeds and tried to give it milk using a small rubber glove with a pinhole and a finger. Somehow it survived. See, I wouldn't have thought of doing that. We had a stuffed bear. Mom pulled out most of the stuffing and put a bottle of hot water inside. The monkey would cling to that and sleep most of the time. Eventually, it opened its eyes and was no longer fooled by the stuffed bear. It would shriek nonstop until you attached it to your neck or ankle, and then it would instantly go to sleep. It, there's a this non-stop shrieking of a vervet monkey. I'm not sure what that sounds like, but I imagine it's a lot worse than a crying baby. And I know from a tweet my wife made how some of y'all feel about crying babies. Uh, this does not seem that bad, except that it would urinate. It says dedicate, but I, I assume it's urinate slash defecate in its sleep. And you would end up with it running down your neck or in your shoe. This happened about every hour. So either it is shrieking nonstop or it's holding on to you, peeing or pooping on you. Every hour. 
My brother was a year old at the time, so mom had some diapers that she cut up to make some monkey diapers out of. So that's the other thing. And this will never stop. It's not like it's a baby and then it'll learn to use the toilet. It will never learn to use the toilet. The fabric was too thick for the monkey and his legs stuck straight out the side. It did not like this, so it took them off. We did not like that, so put them back on, and so it went. And you can't fight with the monkey. I mean, you can now, because in the story, it's still a baby. Uh, Mom knitted a little pair of overalls that would hold the diapers on. Again, this sounds adorable. The monkey did not like that. Its arm now also stuck out the side, and it would had to, and it had to waddle to walk. Kind of like those little kids you see on the ski slopes in their giant puffy jackets. But it worked for a little while. Again, sounds adorable. It got bigger. It chewed through its overalls. Mom made bigger ones with stronger thread. It still had to be riding on you everywhere it went. If you put it down, it would bite. So it, instead of just shrieking now, it attacks you. And it's still a baby. If you tied it up, it would throw a tantrum. Which was kind of funny, to be honest. It would beat on the ground and look up, look up into the sky and wave its fist in fury. Jason, sounds adorable. It could not get out of the overalls, but it could reach into them. Grab a, t grab a turd and throw it at you when it was mad. Again, you know how like cats can be annoying sometimes? They like push stuff off of desks when they're mad. This monkey grabs its poop and earls it at you. Which is like typical monkey behavior. Most monkeys will do this. I wonder if Kiki the spider monkey also does this. Probably. We got hit with a lot of turds in those days. It got bigger. One day we were eating dinner. It sat in my brother's high chair and ate nuts, fruit, and water while the rest of us ate whatever we had. We thought it would be funny to replace its bowl of water with Sprite. It was pretty funny. Uh, dot, dot, dot. Very ominous. It went to take a sip, then looked stunned and pushed it away. Then it carefully pulled it back and poked at it with a finger. Then it would stare at it and lean over to listen to it. Then it suddenly just drank in all and started shrieking. <laughs> we gave it some more water, but after tasting it, it threw, threw the bowl at us and refused to drink it. That's it. Monkey is off water. Two days passed. The monkey could not stand up straight, but whenever we gave it water, it would smell it look at us and slowly tip it over, then fall over on its side. We caved. From then on, the monkey drank nothing but soda. Which is, again, terrible, and there's nothing you can do. It, it, it'll bite you, it'll shriek, it'll throw its poop. We kept the bottle opener magnetically attached to the refrigerator. It learned to get it, it learned where the sodas were, it would lie on its back, pull the soda over on top of it, and jerk on the cap with the opener until the soda poured all over itself on the floor. Then it would sip it off the floor and open all the other bottles. We had soda rarely. It was expensive, but we had a wet, sticky, pissed off monkey. So this is what you're in for. We hid the sodas. It found them. We locked them in a trunk. It figured out how to open it. We locked the trunk. It found the key. We hid the key. It found it and hid, hid it from all of us. We piled blocks on top. It somehow pushed them off. Then it methodically stole all the sodas and hit them in the wooden frame of our sheet metal house. Whenever a windstorm came through, it rained glass soda bottles. And there's nothing you can do again. We'll never grow up and can kill you. It got bigger. When it bit, it really hurt. And then there's a picture of a grown-up vervet monkey. This is what it looks like. You can, you can kind of see the fangs here. <laughs> like, that'll... That thing can kill you. I don't care how big you are. Monkeys are dangerous. It walked around on its back legs, still with the latest version of the overalls and diapers. It had grown a large pot belly and looked like a fat, irritable old man. It pretty much went where it pleased. Dad had a welded cage built around the soda bottles that it would occasionally hit. And throw feces at. So thank God these people are resourceful and able to build build cages and, and sew overalls for the monkey. One day we were eating dinner and ran out of fruit. We had these dinner cookies called digestive biscuits that it saw us eating. It suddenly jumped up, grabbed the box, and took off into the rafters to eat them all. After that it refused to eat fruits or nuts. 
just cookies. About three months later, it was sitting with us at the table drinking soda from the bottle with a cookie in its hand. While stuffing a cookie in its mouth, it, <laughs> it looked suddenly... It looked suddenly... This, this Okay, this is just poorly written. It suddenly startled... It looked... Oh, I gotcha. It looked suddenly startled, then fell over dead. <laughs> There's a lesson in here somewhere. Well, the lesson to me is having a pet monkey is like having a baby that will never grow up and can kill you. And so the can kill you is it either will kill you or will die first. This was Speedball Mike Bailey. Thank you all so much for listening. Again, if you're thinking about it for Christmas, get your your grandma's getting kind of lonely since grandpa passed away. Maybe get her a pet chimp. That's a hard no from Uncle Speedy.